uh, crafting learning crafting environments. Learning I, environments. Think I don't know what you think. Um, what comes to mind first of all, crafting might have to be translated, learning environments, maybe one of the other things of learning systems, LMS, uh, paths that have been uh, shaped in an educational way. And I think in 2023, we need to widen our horizon on what is meant by that and what we want to craft and shape in organizations. I am going to start with a little quote that you might know, you know this one. Who said Chucky, that? Genau, Herr Chucky. Shakil, uh, yes. This is an online presentation. Everything that uh, you see in orange, there's the source as a link there if you want to read on up on that. So working is learning and learning is the work. So the entire topic development to the uh, knowledge society. So the um, Knowledge worker is responsible for his knowledge, its further development and the transfer. Even the direct superior doesn't know as much about the job as the knowledge worker themselves. So the environment of a knowledge worker is his learning environment as well. So the separation that we have in physical rooms, saying when he's at the workplace, he works. When he goes to the academy, two days per year, um, he's learning. No, that's not going to work anymore. You might know this 17, 20, 10 rule, only 10% of what we need for work comes from formal um, trainings. 20% comes from what I learned from others. Maybe one of you wants to make a hybrid uh, conference, look at what we are doing, look at what works, what does not work, and learn from that. And 70% in the original source it said, also learning through Aufgabe, task jobs. So my, um, my boss just uh, pushes me in at the deep end and I have to learn by doing, I make mistakes, etc. And that's part of learning as well. And this is how we need to perceive learning environments as well. So the environment around us, if we learn in for the 17, the, 10, the 20 and the 10%, that's our learning environment, that's how it works. So learning organization, so in order to make the translation a little easier, I have it in English here, but I speak uh, German. So in, for learning organization, we often use uh, sources like uh, David Garvin and Amy Edmondson, and they have defined that a learning organization is an organization that creates knowledge. So innovation is very important, that acquires knowledge, so brings it in from the outside. Jack Welch once said, uh, no matter where an idea comes from, the important thing is that we use it at General Electrics. That's important. You don't need to make every mistake yourself or reinvent things. And the third characteristic is that you internally transfer knowledge. There's no use if one project has a great insight and the other location or department or brand within the group doesn't know about it. So those are the three core characteristics of a learning organization. And then they say there are three factors that are essential, uh, essential for developing such a learning organization on the one hand, and I start from the back. Leadership that reinforces learning, so leadership per the leadership needs to understand itself as a lifelong learner. I think that's the most important factor. A leader who says, oh, I came up with a strategy, but it didn't go well at all. What do we learn from that? And who deals with mistakes openly and has a failure culture? That might be the most important factor. And then specifically, concrete learning processes and practices. So where can we integrate learning in our day-to-day -day work? I mean, if we have a training at Everybody Nons, and then they said, okay, let's make Friday the learning day, and we won't work in projects and in meetings, but uh, we write a wiki and, our experience and gather our experience on a topic, and then everybody says, oh, no, we cannot learn an entire day per week. Um, well, people have already blocked slots, and you might enter a learning day in the calendar in one or the other organization. That is uh, something that stands out. And the third factor, and this is what this year is about, are supportive learning environments. And if you look at the source of Gavin and Edmondson, there are things that you might not think of right away when you think of a learning environment, and that is psychological safety. 
the safety to formulate an idea that is a little bit out of the box, thinking laterally, if somebody says, we've always done it this way, and you might want to say, hey, but maybe we can do it differently today, to come up with a crazy idea that you might have found somewhere. Um, in a Google study, it was uh, shown that in performant teams, that is, is the main factor. Then appreciation of differences, so if everybody has the same knowledge, that's not helpful because that will not help you innovate. Even a long time effective uh, process like evolution depends on doing something differently and uh, choosing what works. And this is why it's so great that we have uh, guidelines like diversity. It's not just about equal rights. It's about a, a crazy mix, old, young, different nationalities, cultural backgrounds, languages. Every culture means that there's a different way of knowing and uh, learning. So it's not just something that you put on a poster, but you have to embrace it. We want this diversity and want to make use of it for learning. Being open for new ideas, to say, okay, when organizing an event or a project, to not just um, push it away, but to say, okay, um, let's talk about this. Being open to new ideas, I see that very often. Somebody comes up with an idea that is not like your own, and you say, oh, that's your idea, I do it differently. Just, but why not take a breather and say, okay, am I, I need to be open for what is new. And then the fourth bullet point here, time for reflection. So to really plan time to reflect and to learn consciously, be it in an agile way, where things are institutionalized, like the lessons learned workshop, but also after a phone call, just take uh, 30 minutes, take three minutes and see, did that work out right? May I um, do it differently or better next time? So those are the soft factors. And what you might have thought of in the very beginning for the learning environment are tools. And obviously, they play a role in the environment. There was a, there's this wonderful saying, a fool with a tool is still a fool. But Jochen, I think you said once, many things that we can imagine are then enabled by tools. So I can imagine an international community of practice, even in a non-digitized world, but if I I'll tell my boss, okay, let the people from the US and Australia fly them in for a day. Probably the budget is not available for that. I might be able to do that once a year to have a meeting, but for the rest of the time, I use tools to communicate. And therefore, it is important to use that. The modern intranet has to be perceived as one enabler. And I don't know if um, you know the top 100 tools, 100 tools for learning by Jane Hartnett. If you have gone through this list over the years, every year they update it, it's told 1,500 people who participate, then in the ranking, in the top 10, there's not a single learning tool. No instructional design tool, no author uh, system or something like that. It started with Twitter. You shouldn't be learning there anymore. Then there's YouTube. Then is there Google search, PowerPoint tools, wikis. So all of those tools that we use for our work, that we use for something that we don't, wouldn't even call learning, we call it search. You want to find an information or you want to send somebody a message. If I ask Karlheinz something and he, I write an email, if he answers, we use an email tool. I learn from him and therefore email is also a learn to, learning tool or Mastodon. And uh, if you look at the intranet of an organization, you have the 702010 that I mentioned, you can think of LMS, uh, LXP and uh, online learning platforms and look at the 90%. So what are the tools that help me find experts on a topic? What are the tools that allow me to share an experience that I've made? What are the tools that I have? Uh, in order to find uh, communities, online communities. So this is organizational stuff. The tool is one thing, Tanya will talk about that, but a community can only work well if I have people who uh, function in the role of a community manager. And, uh, you know, and come back to the fool with the tool. He's still a fool. So starting with the tool and the uh, focus on 
what we uh, perceive as a learning tool. I think it makes then sense to open up our uh, perspective. And then that goes also for the digital workplace. If I'm a uh, knowledge worker and I'm in my own learning environment, and then the question is, how do I build my learning environment? I don't know what your tools are. We have somebody here from Nextcloud during the lightning talks, but I think that most of you will be using the Microsoft world or Google with the tools there. And if I buy a license there for all my staff, then I get the 40, 50 services that I pour over my uh, employees for task management for you with, to do an Outlook, and then there's a planner and project, and uh, then I can uh, manage my tasks in OneNote. What am I going to use now? And if you try mind test this evening, it's as if I arrive in a game. There are many, many resources and options that I could use, and there's not just one solution for me and even for you, what I perceive as a good solution might not be the right one. You have to pick something from what's on offer and then um, craft your own solution. And uh, this is what we want to do for you and the individual guideline. Kind of structure it. What are the tool categories? What do I use as a search? Do I have something like a news feed? Is it, does it make uh, sense of being on threads? I learn a lot from podcasts, 10, 15 hours of podcasts per hour, no, per week. And uh, what about a digital notebook? We have the, the release for the new uh, guideline on, note, on the notebox. We have uh, translated it to digital with Obsidian and Google Search. If you have nothing else, you can use OneNote. So just to think about what the two categories are that I need and how can I organize myself as a knowledge worker and how can I make sure that the uh, uh, that there are uh, bridges between the different tools. So how can I write down my lessons learned from the uh, event into my personal notebook and then to uh, share it via another tool and then maybe come up with a wiki and uh, take the top 10 uh, insights from the entire event. And the tool manufacturers keep telling us that, oh, one day it'll be the search engine. Now they tell us it's AI that's going to do that. And, uh, I don't know if in 10 years' time an AI will give us uh, the uh, insights from a two-day event uh, by pushing a not, I don't know, uh, to, by pushing a, a button. So, Amy Edmondson, let's come back to that. We need to reflect ourselves and uh, consciously rethink everything. So this brings us to crafting. I put in a video here, a tutorial on the first day in Minecraft. I don't know who plays Minecraft or Mindtest. Who has played? Oh, it's much less than those who read the blog. So maybe you should come up here. There will be a few kids who will let you know how to do it. Because I think this is where you actually learn the skill. Maybe you have heard that no code, low code development. That environment. So you don't need to code in order to write software. There is already a foundation there. And uh, I can use that to craft things. And I need a recipe for that. It's the same as in Minecraft. If you want to make a cake, it's not as if you have to go um, and, and uh, cut the sugar cane or something like that. No, the sugar is already there. And uh, it's the same thing. If I found an interesting link in my browser and I want to remember it for later, and I want to have a uh, summary of all the YouTube uh, videos that I've uh, liked, then the AI can come up with, with that for me. I don't need to uh, learn coding. But uh, the office knowledge that I have for writing a business letter is not sufficient. So we could hope that in the organizations, HR or IT could have 
provide people with something. They make a good job in many cases, but I think that they will never have a ready-made solution for knowledge workers because they have a different perspective. They try to see what works for everybody and for someone who is in research, in service, in HR, I don't know, or in a school, it doesn't need to be an organization, or in a party, a political party, it might be a different way of uh, proceeding. So that's my message to you. Let's think about that. What possibilities do we have thanks to these infrastructures in order to craft and to adjust that to our needs? So that's the motto. Go be a crafter. Try it. And share it. That is uh, part of this Loscom Circle idea. I think if you sit together with four or five people and ask, uh, how do you structure your emails? Or how do you post on Mastodon? Or what do you do with your YouTube watch list? Or what is uh, productive in your daily way using chat uh, GPT or something like that to um, find that out and share it in the smaller group, but then later also in the bigger group, so that we can all learn as much as possible. Now, for the keynote speeches, we have not to plan for a Q&A. We're going to have a few minutes break, and then we continue with the next keynote speech. But uh, tomorrow at 10 on the Pink Island, I have uh, a meet, meet the speaker session. You can come there and reach out to me, and uh, for those who don't know their way around the Learn OS yet. Just come and see me there and I'm going to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.